Hey Gunas and Gunaras, welcome back to the channel. Great to see you guys and hope you had a wonderful new year. What a way to celebrate the new year. And obviously we've had tons of stuff up on the channel. We're going to be back to work soon. Normal business has resumed and Arsenal are kicking off with Newcastle tomorrow at the Emirates Stadium. So guys, first of all, before I talk about the preview and the game, I just want to say that thanks to everybody who's been supporting the channel over the last few years, over the Christmas period, we've got our Pele uh, special podcast, which we've done. And thanks, Tony Cox, for that. A great deal. I have not said too much about the Mudrick transfer and what's happening with Felix as well. But I'll probably come on to that over the next few days. But I do want to say the update today is that a second bid has gone in and um, talks are going well. The initial bid of £60 million was rejected. I believe uh, that they are up in this one to around 75 million. Their asking price was 85 million. Chelsea are really there to pounce on any opportunities that Arsenal are going to fail to jump on. So that's the reason why the bid wasn't for an extra 5 or 10 million. Arsenal have increased the bid to around 50 million extras, hoping that a deal with 75 million would be enough. And look, that more than enough craters for meeting them halfway. Uh, Arsenal putting up 60. Shakhtar wanting 85, 75 million is more than enough to get this deal done. So I do believe over the next seven days we'll be hearing a lot more about that and he will be an Arsenal player. And this means that he should be ready to take on Tottenham at uh, their place. But we'll come on to that as time goes on. But overall, guys, we've had two great games over the Christmas period. Two man of the match displays in a row from Martin Odegaard. His assist to Gabriel Martinelli for Arsenal's fourth goal was Meza Ozil Esquik. And since joining nearly two years ago, he has just managed to change the creativity of one of the worst teams in the, in the league into one of the best. Now, Martin Odegaard has been directly involved in 12 goals in his last 13 Premier League appearances, scoring seven goals and setting up five. Also, with Saka and Martinelli, both are in the under 21's top most five assists created in Europe's top five leagues for the year of 2022. So there's a lot going on here, guys. And the reason why I'm saying these things is because everybody was worried about Jesus being injured. Well, first of all, he hadn't scored in 10 games. And secondly, we've just got so many goals and assists from so many different players, including Saka, Martinelli, Odegaard, Xhaka, I mean the list just goes on, the goals are just coming and coming and coming. I sent out details in May uh, last year with Eddie Nketiah's goals per minute in terms of everyone else in the team and he by far, by far is the highest goal scorer that we've had over the years and that includes Lacazette and Aubameyang into the mix. He's scored more per minute than even those two and in fact for all of you fantasy owners in terms of the top predicted forwards for week 17, he is around 5th or 6th, uh, averaging about 5 points per game. So he's ranked higher in the fantasy world than the likes of uh, Watkins, Edward, Da Costa, Mitrovic and um, Ivan Tony. So if any of you guys are looking for a forward you want to pick up, check out Eden Nketiah. And talking about Eden Nketiah, Michael Owen even said that you can see in front of goal he just looks like a finisher. He's calm, he's collected. All the pressure in the world can be on you, but when you're a goal scorer, that's what you've honed your skills in life for. So that's really, really well said. It's so good to see some people starting to turn around on the player that I've always believed in for years. And um, like I said, he's not trying to be like an out and out replacement for the injured Jesus. He's just trying to you know, be himself. He's not trying to fill the void. When Arsenal needs him the most, he gets his goals. And not only that, but his contributions to the team, he, he works hard, he runs deep, he picks up the ball in link play, he pressures the back line constantly. And Jesus tends to dribble past defenders, while Eddie prefers to spin off the last man and run into the six yard line, which makes him more of an effective goal scorer and poacher than Jesus. Now, Eddie scores more goals per minute than Jesus, but Jesus is the total package as a creative player. 
and he already has five assists this season. So you can see where they can alternate them. But for me, I always wanted Arteta to give Eddie more minutes just because he's a better goal scorer. And the two times before when he played them both together, he put Eddie on the left and Jesus in the middle, which I think was the biggest mistake because Eddie's best position is through the middle at number nine. And Jesus played 90% of his games on the left with Man City. So I thought that Arteta wasn't very smart in those moves, but we'll have to see what happens moving forward because as we approach the February and March time in, then European football is going to be back on the menu and then we're going to have Jesus back into the team. But yes, uh, so in my way, in many ways actually, Eddie has replicated Jesus' performances and improved on his goals to a higher standard. And the concern is for me though, for what we saw in the last game against Brighton, is that after 80 minutes, Eddie was spent. And there's no forwards on the team to come and pick him up in relief. And this is a problem which normally Smith Rowe would be helpful with. But with this, coming into the Newcastle game, he's now a lot more fitter now. We're hoping that he's going to be ready as it seems he'll be available for this game. But when asked if the attacking midfielder was close to a return, Arteta said he's made big steps in the last week or so. He's took part in some training sessions lately and he looked good. So we're really keen to have him back soon. So listen, we'll really have to wait to see if he's going to make that Newcastle team sheet. But I hope he does. I hope he's in the squad. And we just have to pray for him coming back. And the likes of Nelson coming back as well from injury. And then Jesus will be back next month, at the end of next month, hopefully as well. So it just it reinforces the fact that we're going to be coming stronger. What that meant was Arsenal have opened up a seven-point lead at the top of the table as Manchester City and Newcastle were both held at home. Now, Arteta is likely to have the same score to choose from, but Saka, guys, was cautioned in the second half of the 4-2 win over Brighton. That was his fourth yellow card this season. And that means if he's booked again against Newcastle, he will miss the North London derby against Spurs, which is in 12 days' time. Now, he started every game so far this season, and I think Arteta... We'll start Saka, but he just must be careful with what he does on the pitch. Now, if Mudrick comes in, then, you know, that makes things different because you can see Martinelli go on to the right or Fabio Vieira, and then you can see Mudrick coming in on the left against Spurs should Saka be banned. William Saliba is in the same boat, guys. If he's booked against Newcastle, he will miss the game against Spurs also. Uh, don't be surprised if Tom Yatsu starts and Ben White is moved into the middle. But look, I can see that right now you're in a session where you've got to keep playing him. Having performed so brilliantly this season, mistakes are starting to creep into his game. But I did say that's because he's only played 27 minutes of football in the last seven weeks. So you have to keep playing Saliba in order for him to rediscover his form against Newcastle. Now, Newcastle themselves, they've been in fine form, guys. Six wins in a row they had before being held goalless by Leeds. And Newcastle, at the moment, Matt Taggart has been ruled out because of a, a heel injury. Alexander and John Shelby, plus Emil Kraft and Paul Drummett, are all going to be out of the game. They're all going to be out of the squad. And since Arsenal let in two goals against Brighton, this means that Newcastle are the best defensive team in the league. And they're well organised defensively. But Arteta's side are impressive going forward. Now, at the end of this uh, month, we're going to have a much better idea of where Arsenal are going to be and then whether they can go the distance for the title race. I've already been on record to say Arsenal will win the title and they've also won their last 11 home games against Newcastle in all competitions. Arsenal currently are on a run of 10 straight league home victories at the Emirates Stadium and they are just the fifth side in history to earn 43 points from the first 16 games. Newcastle themselves are now unbeaten in 12 games. It's their longest unbeaten streak since going 14 matches without defeat in 2011. And Eddie Howe has lost all six of his Premier League away matches against Arsenal by an aggregate of two goals to 16. So my prediction here, guys, is that Arsenal will win 2-1. Their perfect home record and the fans being a 12th man this season will prove too much for Newcastle. Plus... We have the likes of Wenger in support, and that's really given Arsenal the edge and the spirit needed to get them over the line. And Newcastle themselves, 
they have to rediscover the clinical side of their attacking game because goals have started to dry up for them. And this will be the key in this matchup because, again, while Newcastle are the best defensive team, Arsenal are the second best defensive team. So they're still going to have their problems. Now, my lineups, guys, is going to be for Arsenal. It's going to be Ramsdale, White, Saliba, Gabriel, Zinchenko. It's going to be Partey and Xhaka in the midfield as your bookends. And then Saka, Odegaard, Martinelli and Nketiah. So no change there. But for Newcastle, it's going to be Pope, Trippier, Schur, Boatman, Byrne, Longstaff, Guimaraes, Joe Linton, Almeron, Wilson and St. Maximum. So that's how I think that they're all going to line up. And as I said, I'm going for a 2-1 Arsenal home win. Let me know what you guys' thoughts are in the comment section below. I hope you uh, join Tony. I think Tony's live streaming the game anyway. I'm going to be at the Emirates with Gary. So I'll speak to you guys in the next one, man. Peace out. And once again, Happy New Year, everybody.